So it has been a long time since my last video, and I apologize for that. Had a lot of things going on, but I plan to get back to my regular uploading schedule here pretty soon. Wanted to give this video, um, I've been editing it for a long time. It is the aftermath of the CGS GPMG torture test that we did back in July. As you can see, the 240 Bravo is absolutely disgusting for many reasons. One of them being we shot almost 1300 rounds that day and lubricant, suppressor, all that kind of stuff. So thought it would be good to do a deep clean of the 240 Bravo and take you guys along with me. So one thing I noticed as soon as I brought it home is how sluggish the bolt is. You can hear that slow little chunk right there. Um, I knew that something was up. Obviously we were gonna clean it anyways, but I could tell that it was absolutely disgusting and no surprise, it was. So I did put a trigger warning in this video just because I have no formal experience disassembling the M240 Bravo. Uh, those of you who do have experience might cringe at some things that I do, um, but like I said, I have no formal training in doing this. This is not a guide. I do have my uncle here um, who is a army veteran who has a lot of experience with the M240 Bravo, uh, but he's sort of helping coach me along, uh, making sure I don't mess anything up. So right here is the feed pawl mechanism. I noticed that it was really hard to get off, really caked in there. Um, and sort of disassemble it, and we're going to deep clean it here in a little bit. So I'm going to use a lot of CLP in this video. I'm not partial to any solvent, I just have a ton of CLP sitting at home. Um, that's not to say I think that any of them are better than the other. Um, CLP is just what I'm going to be using in this video. So trying to get all the grime out of the tabs that retain the top cover didn't really feel that much in them. The feed ball though, it was really dirty. I uh, had to get some CLP in those little grooves right there, um, sort of flex it around, make sure to get all of it out uh, best I can, taking a rag and just wiping off a lot of the grime on the hinges. So honestly, me just spraying CLP in these hinges and sort of moving them around did wonders as far as making it uh, move more freely, helping those feed paws move back and forth like they should properly. So I use a ton of Q-tips to get out the uh, grime in the tight spaces of the top cover. Once I did that, I was able to put the feed paw mechanism back in place and it was moving much nicer than it was. Once I got it in place and put the clip in, then I sort of took out the last remaining uh, surface grime that I could. So these hel helical springs are actually part of the cartridge guide mechanism. This is kind of a pain to install, um, but once I get the hang of it, it went in no problem. So next I tried to get out of the grime in the feed lever that sits inside of the top cover. Uh, it had a lot of grime in there and there is a little pin that on the bolt which this rides in and sort of how the action cycles. So I wanted to make sure to get this real nice and clean. Once again, this was a really great place to use a Q-tip because there was some tight spaces where I couldn't necessarily get my rag. Made sure to get all that I could out. So the retaining clips inside of the top cover are kind of a pain. Uh, you can see things sort of like fit together, uh, like the groove and the feed lever and the little clips inside of there. It takes some finesse, but once I got them, it was no big deal. The top cover actually does have quite a bit of these retaining clips. I uh, wanted to make sure to get them nice and secure, that way they don't back out, you know, obviously, because that would not be good. 
Um, you can see I used my finger, um, sometimes a flathead screwdriver was necessary just to kind of push them down, make sure they clip in nicely. So you can see it's moving much nicer than it was without all that grime in there. So this is the feed tray and it sits above the bolt and under the top cover. It got a lot of dirt on there, I suspect probably just because of straight blowback uh, of the open bolt mechanism. So it kind of got a lot of um, material on the top. It doesn't necessarily have any impact on function. I just wanted to make sure to get the majority of the grime that I could off. Inside the receiver was pretty nasty, uh, of course. Um, my main concern was to make sure I get all of it off of the rails that are actually inside of the gun. So, like I was mentioning, my uncle who is a army vet who has some experience with the M240 machine gun, he actually taught me a trick on how they used to clean the inside of their receiver in the army, and it's actually using a part from the gun. So you can see how he uses the spring to sort of push the paper towel around, make sure to get in those uh, tight spaces inside the receiver. Kind of a neat little trick that he told me, um, and it helped quite a bit. So this is the op rod of the gun and it contains the firing pin um, and you can see the piston which sits in the front of the gas block. This took a lot of uh, force and you can see how it kind of was stained black. Um, it is actually a silver part, uh, it took a ton of carbon, um, yeah it got its work in. So you can see how the firing pin is retained inside of the op rod. Um, it's obviously because the firing pin is fixed, because it's an open bolt machine gun. So I took off the majority of the bolt. Uh, I didn't completely disassemble it. There's a couple of pins in there, uh, but I wanted to make sure I got the majority of the grime off of the face and the sides of the bolt where it rides in the receiver. So this is actually held in place by the uh, a pin. You can see how the firing pin just slides in and then a pin holds that inside of the op rods assembly. So I just put back the top cover on. It's just held in by this pin right here. It took a little bit of finesse, but I found that it was easier to do it while the top cover and the feed tray was closed inside of the receiver. So I finally got it nice and clean-ish as I could. I didn't have an ultrasonic cleaner. Obviously that would probably be, be best for the small parts, but you can hear how that bolt used to sound before we cleaned it. And then after, much nicer, much more responsive, not as sluggish, it'll do. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. We plan on doing more suppressor tests in the future. Let me know what you think we should test next. See you next time.